Hello students, in continuation with my lecture on superconductors, what we studied in the previous class was Meissner effect. Please subscribe to the channel before continuing to hear the lecture series in order to avail very special facilities which are meant only for subscribers of the channel. When a weak magnetic field is applied to a superconductor at a temperature, below critical temperature, the magnetic flux lines are expelled from the interior and the superconductor starts behaving like a dye magnet. Mathematically, when we say that magnetic field has become zero inside, then from the famous relationship B equal to mu naught into H plus M, where B is magnetic flux density, a measure of the actual magnetic field within a material considered as a concentration of magnetic lines of flux. Mu is the magnetic permeability. M is magnetization. B, magnetic flux density. And H is magnetic field intensity. So when we put B equal to zero, H becomes equal to minus M. Then magnetic susceptibility, which is a ratio of M upon H, becomes equal to minus 1, the condition for diamagnetic materials. So superconducting state is a perfect diamagnet. And diamagnetism and zero resistivity. These are the two independent and essential properties of superconductor. If the resistivity is rho and electric field is E, then from the relationship of electric field and resistivity, we have E is equal to rho into J. From Maxwell's third equation, which states that a changing magnetic field gives rise to a changing electric field or vice versa, we have B, dB upon dt is equal to minus C into curl E, where B is magnetic field, E the electric field, and C the velocity of light. For zero resistivity, the condition of superconductivity, E will also become zero. And what do we get? We get dB upon dt is equal to zero. Integrating both sides, we get P equal to constant. So this means that magnetic flux density in the interior of the superconductor cannot change on cooling at or below transition temperature. So this is contradicting the Meissner effect. Hence, resistivity and perfect diamagnetism, they are independent properties of superconducting state of matter. The definitions of critical temperature, critical magnetic field, critical current, current density, etc. are favorite questions of section A. Two marks. What is the value of critical field of a superconductor at transition temperature? Critical magnetic field. Minimum magnetic field required to destroy the superconducting state is called the critical magnetic field given by BC at a temperature T is equal to B at zero temperature into 1 minus T upon critical temperature whole square. So you can see in this diagram again that below critical temperature, it is behaving like a superconductor and above critical temperature, it is returning back to its normal state. This formula BC at a temperature T equal to B naught into 1 minus T upon Tc square is very important for your numericals. 
what are the important factors that you are helping in deciding the superconducting state are critical temperature below which it is a superconductor above which it is in the normal state critical field below which it is again a superconductor and above which it is in normal state and same thing holds true for critical current so the minimum value of current that can be passed in a sample of superconductor without destroying its superconductivity is called critical current mathematically we depict it as i and a, a small subscript of c suppose we take a superconducting ring of radius r through which we pass current i then from the formula magnetic flux density which is produced due to this current is given by b is equal to mu not i upon 2 pi r and b is also equal to mu not h so if we compare these two equations we find h is equal to i upon 2 pi r when it is a state of critical current of critical magnetic field then h c becomes equal to i c upon 2 pi r so i c is equal to 2 pi r into h c this equation is known as silsby rule the superconducting state is stable only below critical values of magnetic field current and temperature so silsby rule is a criteria which describes the critical value of magnetic field above which a superconductor loses its superconducting state and comes back to its normal state so superconducting state not only depends on temperature and magnetic field but it also depends upon current density j and as is clear from this diagram that as you can see if we take three axes representing temperature current density and magnetic field at critical points till here it is behaving like a superconducting state and the moment these critical points are crossed they are coming back to their normal state and this is a reversible process remember that now in your exam 10 marks or 7 marks questions are asked on the formula bt is equal to b not into 1 minus t upon tc square so let us see how we are going to answer these questions how does the temperature affect the critical field of a superconductor if this is a 10 mark question this will be of 2 marks and the numerical portion will be of 8 marks demarcation will be one or two marks you will get to write the formula one mark to explain each term in the formula another one mark when you keep the values correctly in the formula another one mark if you are able to solve it and convert the units in a uniform manner last one mark for the correct numerical value of the answer now as temperature decreases the critical field increases to a maximum absolute zero and the value of critical magnetic field depends on temperature as the temperature reduces the value of critical magnetic field increases and the variation with temperature you can see here in this diagram if the field is reduced with the temperature held constant the material will return back to normal state critical magnetic field strength depends on temperature and its temperature dependence is given by bc into t is equal to bc at zero time into 1 minus t upon tc whole square so if we write this formula for critical temperature 
either we can square both sides and arrange left hand side and right hand side terms then our formula reduces to this expression in a simple manner now in our numerical we have been given the critical temperature at 0 kelvin is 2.4 into 10 to the power of 6 ampere per meter and at temperature of 6 kelvin it is 1.8 into 10 to the power of 6 so we will just simply put these values in this formula you will have to memorize this formula for your numericals of superconductivity once we have put this value we will solve it 10 to the power of 6 and 10 to the power of 6 will get cancelled straight away and then we just have to find out the under root of 1.8 divided by 2.4. Either we simplify it with LCM, least common multiple, and the expression becomes this. We take the square root, it becomes 0.5, and our answer is 12 Kelvin. A superconducting material has a critical temperature of 4.2 Kelvin in zero magnetic field and a critical field of 0 0.0306 at zero Kelvin. Find the critical field at 2.1 Kelvin. Once again, our formula, critical field at temperature T is equal to critical field at zero Kelvin into one minus T upon critical temperature square. We have been given BC not equal to 0 0.0306 at 0 Kelvin. TC is 4.2 Kelvin and at 2.1 Kelvin. And we have to find the magnetic field at this temperature. So we will put these numerical values in this expression, simplify it, and we get the answer. Another numerical, a superconducting tin has critical temperature of 3.7 Kelvin in zero magnetic field and a critical field of 0 0.0306 Tesla at zero Kelvin. Find the critical field at two Kelvin. Again, we will use this formula. We will put the different values, simplify the expression mathematically, either with the help of Calci or directly, and we get the answer. Thank you.